Um, one, it's a scary time in America, but one, but I, but I would like to think that one day that Donald Trump's reign will come to an end, um, like of being stupid and everything else like that for him. As Trump goes through QAnon and his fellow Republicans turn to even even greater cruelty, hopefully there will be signs of hope, but who knows? The UN, the UN, um. The UN Secretary General Antonio um, Guterres opened the first post-pandemic meeting at the General Assembly in New York this week, warning that the world is in a dangerous place and, and basically we're more di- we're more divided than ever. We're teetering on the edge of a totalitarian, totalitarian, total, sorry, tongue-tied totalitarianism due to economic in- inequality and facing a mountain of problems due to climate change. Divide divides are growing deeper. Inequalities are growing wide, he said. But cha- but cha- but challenges are spreading even further. We all know the source of the of the of the great divide in the United States. Former squatter Donald Trump. Um, he's the large rock thrown. Into, he's he's a he's the largest rock thrown into the world's political ocean, causing tsunamis and ripple effects that can tear nations asunder. Um, <clears throat> and um, even though um, God bless his pointed um, died an empty head, he's still hard at it. Even though there is no God, but a few, a few days a few days earlier, Trump held a Klan rally in Youngstown, Ohio, before his faithful QAnon followers, um, before his faithful QAnon followers in a ha- in a half empty a- arena, and ra- it, uh, they raised a one finger salute to him at such an angle that for many an invited comparison to the Nazi salute, um, to me it looked more like something from a Three Stooges skit, and no, it wasn't that finger. Main- meanwhile, Marjorie Trader Green was accused of kicking child activists. Um, the pedophile Matt Gates was reported to assault the preempt the pardon for sex crime charges that he has yet to face and run to Satanist and his Texas confederate Greg Abbott are using asylum are using asylum seekers as political pawns, shipping them off to northern cities like a pair of human traffickers in training. Now all of all of this highlights the growing sense that there are two nations instead of the United States, which while well, also showing the world how aggressive, hateful, and fear mongering the Republicans have become. I don't feel completely certain that this reality isn't just the LSD flashback that my, um, that any college person promised before they took some bad blood or acid. Meanwhile, most who have who have a common who have a, co- a conscious and are conscious believe um, they believe that there will never they they um they um if you have a conscience and and are and are a conscious um. They believe that there will be there will never be a reckoning for the loathsome, um, dehumanizing, racist, misogynistic, rage ruled, empty headed divisive actions of divisive actions of politicians across this globe. There is a certain unity among the fans of authoritarianism. Today in America, it's far, um, the far right is replete with Vladimir Putin lovers. Putin is the ultimate strongman in today's world and wants to get the old Soviet Union band back together. He hates democracy, and with the exception of Donald Trump, has never gotten along with any American um, American president or squatter. Um, he's funneled money into politics across the globe to try and destroy democratic government by even dumping money into the NRA to spread his authoritarian message to those Americans who worship guns before before them before Jesus, while still claiming that they are Christian, even though they're not. Um, those gun-loving evangelicals are pushing hard to make sure that women die or forced to, or, or and are forced to give birth, and they don't really seem to care which fucking happens. If women die in childbirth, they'll shrug their shoulders and say, whatever God willed it, even though God doesn't exist. Um, if unwanted children are born, those same so-called fake Christians will shrug their shoulders and refuse, um, and refuse to mother and child any um, sustenance, health care, or, or infrastructure. But they'll happily support hiring those children a few years later to pick lettuce or work in a coal mine, or if they can crush the unions that once pushed for child labor laws. They are eager to defend the right to choose when it comes to COVID vaccines, but not when it comes to a woman. They remain chattel. The Democrats are struggling to hold on to both their sanity and a majority in Congress, but they can't seem to figure out why anyone would still support Trump, Abbott, the Satanists, the Trader Green, or the pedophile Gates, no. um, the um, the piece of shit um, Lauren Bulbert, um, um, Jim Jim Jordan, Mitch McConnell, or the other rancorous um, rancorous horsefly larvae in the Republican Party. Now, Rusty Bowers. An American conservative um, Republican who testified before the House January 6th Klan Committee, had um, like the Klan Attack Committee basically, recently lost the GOP primary for, for a state Senate seat to the former state Senator David Farnsworth, who said he had no doubt about the 2020 election was being stolen from Trump by a conspiracy headed by the devil himself. Hmm. Maybe he's the one who took the wrong acid and is now having a fucking pathetic flashback. At any rate, 
Um, Rusty Bauer said, welcome to fascism afterward. And that seems to be where we are just six weeks away from the midterms. Um, there's a significant time frame here. It was six weeks before the 2020 general election when Trump said in the White House briefing room that he wouldn't accept the peaceful transfer of power, and we all know how that ended. He has never accepted his defeat. Um, it appears that we're still in the same boat here, rowing toward the Trump-induced tsunami, an, ex an existential horror show that was highlighted by crimes against humanity and, and underscored by an, by an especially scary week in the news. Um, let's take some time to understand what we're actually seeing here this week. Um... It's the end of Don we're hoping it's the end of Donald Trump, the death throes of an of an anchor of an anch of an anachronistic par political party, and the destruction of the authoritarianism if we, of, of the authoritarianism if true if we choose on a global scale here. Sure, it's frightening to see Donald Trump sucking up to QAnon sycophants, while continuing to beg for money in the dozens of daily emails sent out to his inbred sycophants. Those QAnon folks are batshit fucking crazy, but if they're but if but if they're your core sycophants, you're fucked. National polls show that Trump's post squatteral popularity is continuing to fade. Are those QAnon sycophants violent? Yes. But can Trump move the mainstream like he did in 2016? Not a fucking chance. He's supported by a continually dwindling number of, mal of malcontents, morons, and mavens of autocracy. He's losing his, um, he's losing his, um, um, what we refer to as his mojo. This week, 200, a $250 million civil suit was filed in New York by State Attorney General Leticia James against Trump, his company, and his three stupid-ass children. Um, and it underscores how little Trump has left as a grifter preying upon a gullible public. Trump has violated several state criminal criminal laws, including falsifying business records and issuing false financial statements and insurance fraud. She, um, James, James added, J Leticia James has added that Trump wasn't going to get away with it just because he was an ex-squatter and thanked and thank the invisible ferryman, because even though, like I said, God doesn't exist, Let's face it, we all know it was going to end this way. If you saw Trump make fun of a reporter with a disability, and if you ever saw him on his TV show, or if you ever met the man in person, you had to fucking know. If you didn't, then you were his fucking merc. For months, we have said that all this ends with an indictment, and I see no reason to change my mind now. Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen, was thanked by James, by Letitia James in her press conference, and basically afterward, um, he was appreciative of the shout-out. After all, the original investigation began with him, but was, but was surprised as well. The last few years have been filled with sadness, pain, and anger. But Wednesday's, but Wednesday's announcement by, by Letitia James makes, it all, makes all that hell fucking worth it. Uh, Michael Cohen also believes Trump will be indicted and still thinks he won't run for squatter again, but it's all about the con. And Trump, power, and Trump powers to run the con are waning. He convinced the judge who he had appointed to order a special master to review classified and other material that was seized at the FBI search, after the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago in August, but that hasn't gone too well for Trump to this point. But Judge Raymond Deary of Brooklyn, the guy Trump's team wanted, told Trump's lawyers, you can't have your cake and eat it after they, constant, after they consistently declined to repeat Trump's public assertions that he had to classify all the documents taken from his, um, from his piece of shit home. Um, and because Trump, we know, did not declassify decla them. They were all classified documents. In a recent interview with Sean and Sanity on Wednesday evening, Trump claimed that as squatter he could have classified documents just by thinking about it. Um, that's not how it works. Um, it appears that Trump is no longer the master of his domain. The news got worse for Trump, for him on Wednesday when the panel of judges on the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals granted a Justice Department request that will allow prosecutors to continue investigating the former squatter while Deary evaluates um, the materials taken by the FBI from Mar-a-Lago, even if the agents refuse to take off their fucking shoes. Um, now, Trump isn't the only racist, fear-mongering con man whose time is running out. Um... Ron, De Ron DeSatanist thinks he's a pretty smart guy, which, in reality, DeSatanist is a fucking idiot. He's managed to limit press co coverage and, crit and criticism of his more Mussolini-like tendencies. He also really likes to stick it to the Democrats, the Walt Disney Company, and anyone else in Florida who doesn't bend over and take it up the ass. He is one of the biggest peddlers of fear in our country right now. His stunt in shipping immigration asylum seekers to Martha's Vineyard could is actually considered a criminal act, and at the very least, was irrational and very hateful and racist. Now, Joel Walsh, the, the Joel Walsh, the former Tea Party congressman, who was Trump's only GOP opponent in 2020, appoint, pointed directly at the Satanists for creating fear where there shouldn't be any. This needs to be said again. There are people every day who sneak across the border and enter this country illegally, Walsh wrote on Twitter. But people seeking asylum are not entering this country illegally. And those people the Satanists put on a plane were seeking asylum. They were not here illegally. Turns out some of those asylum seekers are now suing the Satanists. After after that after that he rep he reportedly backtracked from the chorus of Hardy Guthals 
allegedly saying he wasn't the architect of the plan to, send, to spend Florida's tax dollars on shipping his island seekers from Texas all the way to Massachusetts. He'll be cooked before he can even before he can even become another Donald Trump. And Matt Gates is also on the outs and apparently can't find um, uh, can't find a date on Tinder a bumble unless the person's 17 because you know he likes them 17 and younger. Um, Ted Cruz can't find a, a, a Cancun cabana in which to hide out in. Um, Jim Jordan is facing a scrutiny for his role in the college sex abuse scandal case, and he's also the focus of an upcoming um, and he's also the focus of an upcoming HBO documentary that's being produced by George Clooney. Um, Trader Green and the and the and the um, and the um, and the other Neanderthal and the other Neanderthal Bulbert are pariahs with little with little power at all. But they just what they have is just fucking big mouths where they talk a lot of shit but don't do anything. They gain attention like the kid in the sandbox who constantly soils himself, who constantly pisses themselves through indiscriminate yelling. And that lays Moscow Mitch and Rand Paul, two devilish freaks of nature, who have who must have a special ingredient in their Kentucky bourbon to keep them standing des- despite their fascist tendencies. Now those two, along with the fat fuck bar, seem to have pre- um, the pre um, um, pre pre-ter- natural survival instincts. Now this is on the domestic front. Um, Guterres pointed out that the pro- that the problem of totalitarianism is spreading across the globe, and Trump, with his bombast and open disregard for the law, enabled petty dictators everywhere. The point was understood this week as Putin announced that he would call up 300,000 reserves for the war in Ukraine and threatened re- and threatened to retaliate against the United States with nuclear weapons if he chooses. Um, He has 81% of his army commi- um basically Putin has um 81% of his army committed committed in Ukraine a source that the national security said he um 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 Putin is losing and he has no other play this move shows how Putin's weakness and his da- um, um this move shows how dangerous Putin is um much like Trump he's also he's also a cornered fucking rat but the man behind the rise of global authoritarianism he's a master of deflection propaganda and the long con and he's made the world much more dangerous and still there's fucking hope um, in Gutierrez's speech this week, he made. In Gu- I'm sorry. In Gutierrez's speech this week, he made one thing exceptionally clear: if you can speak out against the fascists, then there's still hope that that they can be defeated. But it was, but it was Letitia James in the Eleventh Court Circuit on Wednesday who made this fucking deliciously clear. So, um, so if you like the video, you can give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, R B W King. You can also hit the notification bell so that you know when a new video comes out. And if you want to support my work even further, you can donate to my Patreon link, which you can find in the about section of YouTube. And for just a little to a few bucks a month, your donation can help go a long way, and thanks for listening.